there everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. I am happy to have you here with us today. Today is going to be a very fun day. We are going to can a ton of produce. We are going to can 120, I think, pounds of peaches. We are going to make 80 pounds of tomatoes worth of salsa, which is a lot of salsa, but we need a lot of salsa around here. My preferred method of canning is to be able to do big bulk days like this, where I can just get everything done that I need for the entire year in one day of whatever product I'm doing. So in this case, the salsa and the peaches. In all likelihood, we will be doing this over two days. I can't see us getting all of that canning done in one day, but you never know. Down in the garden to see if there's anything that I need to harvest this morning before I get into probably our biggest canning canning day of the year. Let's see over here. I imagine I have a lot of pickling cucumbers because I missed picking the pickling cucumbers yesterday. Oh no! Split cabbage, no! That means that I do need to get this cabbage, this one, this one, and this one all picked. And there's my yarn. I was looking for that. I use yarn for all my trellising in my high tunnel and I had my yarn in my harvesting pouch the other day and I put it down there because I'd filled it up with veggies. So I'm going to have to get those harvested and oh dear yes <laughs> and we're going to have to pick some pickling cucumbers as well but that is actually going to have to wait. The reason that I'm down in my garden right now besides just having a quick look over to see if there's anything that really must be harvested is to pick some cilantro to add to our salsa that we're gonna be canning today. We went to a family camp over the weekend and on the way back, we stopped by a fruit stand and picked up peaches. We can't grow peaches here where we are, so I always buy them in bulk. And thankfully, the fruit stand that we go to sells in bulk. Got 100 pounds worth of tomatoes, Roma tomatoes, so that I could get started on salsa making. I do have my high tunnel back over, there where we are growing a ton of tomatoes but all of those tomatoes are going to be turned into sauce for the winter time we go through a ton of tomato products here getting that extra 100 pounds of uh, tomatoes is fantastic so we are going to turn almost all of that except for maybe one box into salsa that is a lot of salsa oh no look at this my carrots are being munched on by, I'm going to guess, mice. Oh no! It is a terrible year for mice this year. I don't know what's going on, but they are everywhere. In fact, most rodents, we have a proliferation of squirrels, chipmunks, rabbits, and mice this year. So I guess I'm gonna be picking all of these carrots. Oh no! Oh, there's some that aren't munched on. These are huge carrots. They are definitely ready to be picked. I guess I know what I'm gonna be doing tomorrow. We're going to be harvesting carrots tomorrow. We are going to be harvesting pickling cucumbers tomorrow. And it doesn't look like there's much else that we have to get up right now. I really do wanna get my leeks picked and freeze dried for the winter. They are definitely ready, but they can also hold up for another day. So it's a good thing that I came down to the garden to look. I tried to get down to the garden every single day for exactly this reason. We got another flush of these beautiful snapdragons. Oh my goodness, aren't they just so beautiful? Okay, and it looks like I have some more cabbages over there that I'm gonna need to pick here pretty quickly as well. This time of year is just absolute madness because everything um, is ready to go at once. Cilantro up to the house and get into some serious canning. In all likelihood, this is going to go over two days, this big canning extravaganza, but I will share with you the whole entire thing. So I'll share it all in one video and then the next one we'll be doing that huge harvest. And then we're gonna have to figure out how to, we're going to preserve all that. Ooh, <laughs> I get so squirreled when I'm walking through the garden. Look at the celery yak. Nice and big. This is uh, bigger actually than the celery yak that I grew last year that I harvested in like mid-September. So that's exciting. 
I did start my celery ack earlier. I think I started them in February when I started my celery. So that's probably why it's so much bigger. It does take a long time for them to germinate and for them to grow. They're slow growing plants. Okay, one more stop <laughs> before we go up to the house. The bee balm is in her full glory with bumblebees all over. Beautiful. Got echinacea blow blooming. This is the tallest echinacea I have ever had. Just about five feet tall. Look at that cute little bumblebee. Okay, now let's get up to the house. Um, a couple of people from Australia and New Zealand said that you call these ones apple uh, cucumbers. So I can see why it does look like a little apple, doesn't it? So I have been told that all I need to do is wash this off, that the little prickles that are on it just kind of wash off. The skin is fairly thin and then we'll give it a try. It smells just like a regular cucumber. So this tastes exactly like a cucumber. It's really good. I can see how when it's a little bit smaller, the skin wouldn't be quite so tough because it is a little bit tough, but the flavor is really, really good. I think this would really be really good in a Greek salad and they're really pretty. So even sliced up on a plate would be nice. This is my go-to canning book. So I'm just using the fresh vegetable salsa recipe out of this book. Um, so we need seven cups of peeled tomatoes, and I do have a giant measuring cup. Let me grab that. Look at this beautiful measuring cup. Isn't that lovely? This was actually sent to me by a subscriber, and I love it so much. It's beautiful, and it's a six cup measuring cup. 14, 28 in each of these, and I am just going to get a pen and paper so I can remember how many times I've doubled because we have all of these, we have that pot there, and then we have four more equal sized batches that we need to do. So if I don't jot them down, I know I'm going to forget. One sec. Got 28 of the tomatoes, which means we need two, four, six, eight. So we're going to need eight cups of onion, we're going to need four cups of peppers, and I'm going to use a mix of red and green peppers for this recipe. We're going to need 12 cloves of garlic per pot. We're going to need 32 jalapenos, but I think I will adjust that because that is going to be very hot, <laughs> and I don't like really super hot um, salsa. We're going to need four cans of tomato paste. We're going to need two cups cilantro. Cilantro is one of those things that you either love or you hate, and it's something that you can totally omit from this recipe if you like. Um, we need two teaspoons of cumin. We need three cups of vinegar. And that will be that. So we are going to wait for our food processor to do the onions because I uh, don't want to chop the onions. So Dan should be back here in a little bit. So I am going to get everything else added into this. I will manually chop up the peppers because those are fairly easy to chop. Peppers, so I'm going to use two green and two red per batch. My plan for the peppers that are in my high tunnel is I will be chopping those up and freezing them or freeze drying them. I haven't decided what to do yet to add into recipes throughout the um, winter. So we're going to do these into little chunks. I want all of my veggies in my salsa to be uniformly sized, so around that size is what I'm looking for. One of my boys really loves really hot stuff, so they had some white jalapenos at the um, at the fruit stand. So I bought 
a case of them <laughs> to make him a case or a huge batch of white jalapeno cowboy candy. And he tried one earlier and said it was really hot. So can I grab one of those, honey, so I can show them? So this is what they look like. Like I said, I don't like a lot of heat. So I usually, and most of us don't like a lot of heat, so I usually don't make things very spicy. But I like to make some spicy things so he can add them to the things that we like that are more mild. Chopping jalapenos or any kind of really hot pepper. Make sure you wear gloves. The first year or so when I was young, when I first started learning how to can, I didn't think it was necessary, so I didn't do it. And I ended up with peeling fingers so, and definitely, especially if you have little cuts or anything on your hands, you want to, to wear gloves. And don't touch your face. And don't touch your face. And don't touch your eyes. <laughs> definitely. So I just cut them like this one? Yep, yeah, into rings. Whatever size, actually, it's your preference because you're probably going to be the only one that eats them. So cut them into whatever size you would like them to be. I think I like them quite thin because I like them on hamburgers. Okay. Sounds good. So all cowboy candy is, is hot peppers in a heavy syrup. It's so good. My favorite is our yellow banana peppers with a few jalapenos in the jar and um, with cheese and crackers. So delicious. One of my favorite snacks. And yeah, my daughter is really into canning kind of like fancier things. So she was just saying that she wants to learn how to do um, pepper jelly, that's another one of my favorites. And she's going to do watermelon rind pickles, which we have not done before. So we bought a watermelon. Where is that watermelon? In the fridge. Oh, you put it in the fridge. That was smart because it's so, yeah, it's so warm right flies. now. And fruit flies. Yeah, we're heading into fruit fly season. And the box of peppers that I just brought in, when I pulled the lid off, fruit flies came out. So I just infested my kitchen with fruit flies, unfortunately. I already set some traps out just so that we can hopefully <laughs> get ahead of the problem. It's pretty much and inevitable during canning season to end up with fruit flies because there is fruit laying out all over this, the place, especially when it's warm like this. It's a perfect environment for them. Dan just texted me and said that he found a 13 cup food processor which is really exciting because that's pretty big. I think my last one was a seven cup one, so I am happy to hear that. I um, was talking to a couple of my ranching friends about hay this year, and it is a serious issue here in British Columbia. I'm sure it is across Canada, but it is especially bad. We've had a really bad drought and I have a friend who's been ranching for a really long time and she said that she has never seen um, drought conditions this bad in our region before, which is a major issue for beef producers because of course they feed in our climate. They feed hay during the winter time. So Dan was just out today cutting up every possible <laughs> place that we could possibly cut to hopefully get enough hay for uh, for animals for the winter time because hay prices are going to be very very high and it's just really hard to find hay i've had messages from multiple friends asking if we have any hay this year if we know anybody who has hay for sale so that is um, kind of concerning i am going to leave these garlic and throw those in the food processor and prep all my onions for the food processor I'm gonna have to get my goggles first. But what else can we add in here? We can add our two cups of, of cilantro, pardon me. So we have some beautiful cilantro here. My cilantro has bolted already. So I bought some, pardon me, honey? Some green ones? Sure, that would be great. I am one of those people that loves cilantro it smells Ew. so good <laughs> she does not <laughs> just love the lemony smell of it and I just feel like salsa just doesn't taste like salsa without cilantro cilantro so put that two cups 
per batch here. And I'll get these two going on the stove. And then I'll start all the chopping for the next batches. I am dearly hoping that I have cumin down in the pantry <laughs> because this is all I have right now, which is about one teaspoon worth of cumin. Ugh. I am fairly sure I have a bulk bag down there. I'll be right back. I was sure that I had a huge bulk bag of cumin. I'm gonna send somebody down so that there's a second set of eyes to see if maybe I missed it, but it's a fairly key ingredient in the salsa. <laughs> so thank goodness Dan had not yet left from town, so he's gonna pick me up some in case I don't actually have some in my pantry. This is already looking beautiful. So we're gonna add our vinegar to this. Make sure that you're using a 5% vinegar or higher. And this measuring cup just makes me happy. <laughs> I love using it, it's so pretty. I'm going to put this on the stove on high till it comes to a boil and then we're gonna simmer it for 30 minutes. So we still have all of our onion to add to that as well. So I'll get the onion prepped up now and then move on to my next batches <laughs> that I need to make. This is going to be, I think, the largest salsa canning uh, extravaganza that I have ever done as far as the amount of actual salsa we're gonna make. I wonder how many jars we're gonna end up with in the end with 80 pounds of tomatoes. Remember how I shared with you a while ago how each leaf on the onion equals a ring on the inside of the onion? This one is a really good example of how you can see that. So each one of these went up and formed a leaf. So you want to encourage as much leafy growth on your onions as possible. Um, some people say that by pruning them, it encourages growth. So I do have an experiment running out in my garden right now where side by side, I have some onions that are pruned and some that are not. So we'll be able to do a comparison when it is time to harvest them all. So for my jalapenos, I am taking out the seeds and the ribs on the inside because that's where a lot of the heat is. So we're going to I think I'll probably add maybe 15 or so per batch. <clears throat> Dan is back with my new food processor. What else did you get? Oh, tomato paste. Thank you. That's awesome. Uh oh, <laughs> coffee. I am so excited. It smells like salsa. Wow, that's beautiful. Ooh, I like that. That's nice. That's handy. This is pretty nice, Dan. Yeah, it's huge. Okay, let's give it a try. I'm not super crazy about the fact that this lid, at least from what I can tell right now, does not come actually come off. Hmm. Oh, never mind. <laughs> it does come off. Okay, now I like it. <laughs> yes, it does. It does? Yep. That is a nice food processor. I like it. We're gonna let this simmer for a couple more minutes and then we are going to can it up. And I'm going to be using quart jars for canning up our salsa because we use quite a bit of salsa. Thank you. 
our four jars lids. I do have a 10% off discount code, which I completely forgot that I had <laughs> until they reminded me the other day, which I'll put down in the show notes for you if you would like to order some four jars lid. Our jars in our canner now. And using our steam canner on high. We're gonna wait till it comes up to the dark green here for our elevation. This is technically a seven quart canner, but I am finding that with the wide mouth jars that when I put seven in there, it's kind of hard to get the lid off. So I have been just running it with six and haven't had any issues. Uh, I'm gonna get the next batch on the stove and then start preparing all the other things that we need for the rest of the chopped tomatoes that we have on the table. Once I have all of this through the canner, I will come back and show you everything. I think what we're going to do next is the um, cowboy candy. And we'll see if we have time to do peaches in this video, but if we don't, we'll definitely do it in the next one. All right, friends, we're on to day two of this canning extravaganza. And I was going to try to clean my kitchen up a little bit before you joined me, but uh, that's not gonna happen because I have about 40 or 50 quarts of peaches to get through this morning. I did finish all of the salsa and we ended up with, I think around 50 jars of salsa, which is fantastic. I did two, the two last batches early this morning, <clears throat> excuse me. I have my steam canner going with peaches and it's 30 minutes. I'll walk you through the whole process of it, but I have my steam canner going and then I have my nine quart water bath canner on the element outside. And that's also where we're blanching our peaches just so that we don't heat the house up because it's supposed to be another scorcher today. So let me show you what we do. I don't actually have any peaches to blanch right now because we're caught up to where we need to be in this whole entire process. But basically we take our peaches and blanch them in boiling water for three minutes. If they are super ripe, do two minutes because otherwise they'll get mushy. Dump them straight into cold water. So just as I've shared with you before with blanching um, uh, broccoli, cauliflower, things like that, any blanching is usually three minutes and then an ice water dunk afterwards. And what that does is it allows the skin to be really easy to pull off. Tomatoes are the same. And I should have mentioned earlier that I do not peel my Roma tomatoes for my salsa. Some people do, it is totally a personal preference. It is recommended to peel your tomatoes because your tomatoes can harbor bacteria or your tomato skins rather if there's any cracks in them or anything like that. But I'm very meticulous about making sure my tomatoes are well washed and any bad parts are cut off. So I feel comfortable with doing that. Um, so anyway, same process for peeling the peaches. And once we peel them, we cut them into size, the size of these. You can cut them into whatever size is your preference and then put them in cold water as we're slicing them with a little bit of lemon juice to stop them from browning. Then we put them into jars like so. And I have made, <laughs> my kitchen is such a mess, oh my goodness. Look at this counter, oh my goodness. Okay, so this is syrup. I like a light syrup. So this is actually water and honey, probably two gallons of water to around two cups of honey. That's what I've done, but you can sweeten it to your own taste preferences. I am using a little bit of honey in this batch. I'll probably use some organic sugar in some of the other batches. I just had some honey to use up. So boil your um, syrup until it's nice and hot. Pack your peaches in the jars and then cover them with syrup. Debubble your jars to take your bubbles out. Have about half an inch of headspace. I'm water bath canning for 30 minutes for my elevation, so make sure you do check your elevation. I have 24 minutes left um, for this batch before we can put the next batch in. So I am going to wait to put my syrup in to these jars before because I do want them to be hot when they go into the hot canner so I don't end up with broken glasses do or jars. Um, do be aware that you might need to cool your canner down a little bit in between batches because boiling water is very hot. And even if you are hot packing, meaning that all of your product in your jar is hot, chances are the boiling water of your canner is going to be even hotter. And I actually have already lost a jar to that happening today. So make sure that you cool it down with a little bit of cold water before you add in your next batch. My goal today is to have all of these peaches canned. My kids really want me to make some peach salsa 
So I'm probably gonna hold one box back to make, make peach salsa, but I will save that for another video. And I might end up canning some of the cowboy candy. We do have all of the peppers cut and prepped from yesterday to make the cowboy candy today, and that's a pretty easy one to do. But first, let's get all these peaches into jars. So this is what we're using. And this is my nine quart water bath canner. So can you see how it's boiling there? What I'm looking for here is a rolling boil and we're just about at that point now. And that's where basically the bubbles look like they're rolling. And then we want this water to be an inch above our jars. I actually could add a little bit more water there because that is a taller jar. So this takes so much longer than the steam canner. I'm actually going to buy myself another steam canner. I put all of these jars in at the same time and this has already been running for 13 minutes and that is just coming up to temperature now. So, um, and I actually had to have that one on getting hot for probably 30 minutes before I could actually, it was hot enough to actually put my jars in and proceed with canning. This is a huge time saver and also it doesn't heat your house up nearly as bad as a water bath canner would. We are now done the peaches. We have the last batch in the steam canner. We ended up with 57 jars of peaches and 54 jars of salsa, which feels pretty incredible. So we're going to round out the day with getting our cowboy candy. So these are the white jalapenos and then we have some green ones here. And we are going to be doing these ones in pint jars. This is a super, super easy recipe, which is why I decided to squeeze it in at the end of the day. We're going to finish this up and then we are going to go swimming at the lake because it is very, very hot. Even though we did most of the canning outside, it's still pretty hot in the house right now. So we are going to be using apple cider vinegar for this recipe. A half a cup of sugar for every cup of vinegar for this recipe. So if I can get into the bag. So we'll do six cups of sugar. So this is a lot of sugar. It is a very thick syrup that we are going to be um, using, but this is a condiment. So you don't eat very much at once. And then we're going to do three cups of apple cider vinegar. Gonna add a little bit of turmeric in there for some extra color. And this recipe does call for chili powder and for, what was it, ginger maybe? Yeah, ginger, and those are both optional. So I am not going to add them. And we're going to get this boiling on the stove and then we're going to add our peppers to it. Cook them for about four to five minutes and then jar them up in our jars. Canning like this is definitely a lot of work, but I find that it is so incredibly rewarding to come to the end of a canning day like this and see my counters completely covered with canned goods that are going to last us for um, all the way up until uh, the beginning of summer next year and that feels fantastic. My pantry is starting to fill up so I have a goal to hit 1200 jars this year so normally I can around a thousand jars at least I have been for the last couple of years and I'd like to bring that up a little bit more. There's certain things that we used more of um, than I had on hand last year. One was bone broth so I've done a ton of broth already. I still need to do some beef broth. Um, what was one of the other things? What was one of the other things? Um, zucchini relish. The zucchini relish, yeah. So I'm definitely gonna be doing chicken. another batch of, no, we had chicken still. We just, really? yeah, we just used the last of our chicken. So we're actually good for chicken. My daughter is making those um, pickled, what, were, what are they? Pickled, Pickled watermelon, watermelon, rinds. watermelon rinds over there right now. She wants to give them a try. Um, so let's clear off a little bit of space here. My counters are going to be full like this for 24 hours until we can move all of these jars down to the pantry. And so far we have 100% seal rate on our four jars lids, which is pretty darn good. Let's see, is there anything that hasn't sealed, that just came out of the canner? Nope. So yeah, 100% <laughs> seal rate. That's fantastic. 
I do believe that I'm going to need more jars than just these six jars that I have here because this is a pretty good size batch. We have this bag chopped up, so this is the ones that we chopped up yesterday. And then I have some jalapenos over here and I might leave those and do this straight up. Just um, the green jalapeno cowboy candy tomorrow. Um, and then just do the white ones today. So we're gonna go plunk these right into our syrup. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that smells very spicy. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's really strong. So we're going to use a slotted spoon to scoop these out and then we will ladle the hot syrup on the top of it. Might be able to use the same brine to do the green ones too because I have lots of brine in there. You know, I think I probably will. Okay, so we're just gonna debubble these. And then, due to the fact that we're using such, oh hi, <laughs> due to the fact that we're using such a thick syrup, I'm gonna use a little bit of vinegar water for washing these off. It is so sticky, and the vinegar will help cut any of the stickiness from these jars. I'm going to steam can these for 10 minutes. That ring is warped for 10 minutes in my steam canner. All right, my friends, I would call that a very successful 27 hours or so since I first started doing all of this canning. We ended up with 117 jars of canning, most of those being quarts and around 10 of them being pints. And I am feeling really, really good about that. I cannot wait to get these loaded onto the pantry shelves. We are headed to the lake because it is so incredibly hot in here. I can't even believe it, especially with all these jars radiating heat. So I hope that you enjoyed today's video, everyone. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.